welcome to my channel and the next installment of the Ravenna skull dress build that I'm working on from Snow White and the Huntsman. This video will detail how I made this front breastplate thing. You don't need to have seen the other installments to understand this video except maybe the 1760s stays video which I'll make sure to put up in the cards and link down in the description below. I only say that one because I did use that as the base for the design and fit of this front plate. But realistically, if you just wanted to learn a little bit about working with Warbla um, and thermoplastics, then you don't even really need to go see that video either. But again, everything will be linked below, including links to the materials that I used just in case you want to try this yourself. Let me start off with just a little note about the material that I used. So I used a thermoplastic called Warbla. Thermoplastics are just plastics that become moldable when they are heated. Warbla is a non-toxic thermoplastic that is my absolute favorite to work with. It is made from plant materials and there are various different kinds that you can use. So for example, Finest Art, which is their original, is this brown. It's actually made from sawdust and you can really smell it when you heat it up. It it actually smells quite nice. It reminds me of my father's workshop when I was a kid. Or this Warbla, the white version of the Warbla is made from rice powder, which is really cool. Um, I don't think that they describe what the black is made of. I think they just say it's like plant-based material. So don't know what that is, but it's super cool. It's very non-toxic. You don't need to have special ventilation. You don't need to wear a face mask. Don't eat it. Like you're still not supposed to consume it. I saw this whole trend with Has Been Hotel about people making warbler teeth. Don't do that. They absolutely warn against doing like that. Like not only does, do you have to like heat this up to make it pliable, but it's just not safe to consume. Just because it's non-toxic doesn't mean you can eat it. So don't use it for anything you're going to be putting in your mouth. But other than that, it's perfectly safe to work with. You don't even need gloves. Though I do recommend using heat resistant gloves because this stuff does get very hot. I don't. I'm kind of used to the heat. Um, I do occasionally burn myself, but it's not like too terribly bad. Um, so I'm really bad at using heat resistant gloves. So this is like a do as I say, not as I do moment. I really recommend using gloves, um, particularly if you use their clear version. Um, that stuff gets extraordinarily hot. I can't even touch it whenever I heat it up. So um, just a word of caution. And a heat gun to heat up the Warbla, you're good to go. Warbla has self-adhesive properties, which uh, means you don't even have to have glue. So to make something like this breastplate, you just need to choose the type of Warbla you want. I recommend the Warbla's Black Art. It has a smoother texture. It's a bit stretchier than the Warbla's Finest, and it, it rolls out really really easy it's a bit more pliable a bit more sculptable um, so that is what I used for the majority of this I did kind of run out so I used a couple pieces of the Warbler's Finest at a later time I recommend that I also um, recommend Warbler's black art if you are using or even white the white is really good too I just think the black is a bit more adhesive but if you are going to be doing anything that's going to be very difficult to sand such as the these vine things that I make for the plate highly recommend using something like warbler's black or warbler's white because it has a smoother texture and it's a lot easier to cover up with a primer and requires a lot less work to finish warbler you need warbler you need heat resistant gloves i'm going to say it you need a heat gun hair dryer will not work for this so you need a heat gun you need rust-oleum prime and fill you can find it in the automotive section of walmart it's six or seven dollars a can i cannot recommend this enough for priming both warbler creations and 3d prints i use this for everything i rarely sand a 3d print because i use this instead and i rarely sand warbler outside of like some seams because I use this. I will wet sand by hand the pieces that I make after using this Rust-Oleum Prime and Fill occasionally. If you do that, you can get a really nice like glass-like finish. But if you apply it correctly and enough coats, you don't even really need to sand. It just really depends on what you're making. So Rust-Oleum Prime and Fill. And then in this case, a I needed a metallic silver paint. So I used this Rust-Oleum um, metallic silver it's one of the best metallic paints you can get it literally looks like 
metal, like like liquid metal when you spray it, it's super pretty. Um, I also used a front applique for the base of the skulls, so you can pick anything you want, but this is the one that I chose. And then I 3D printed the, the rain skulls. I downloaded the file from Thing Thingiverse is what I think site's called. I'll make sure it's linked down below. And I also used Sherbonder, which is a special kind of hot glue that is far more sturdy um, than a standard hot glue. Like it sticks to things. It is amazing. It's a bit stringier than normal hot glue, but I, I love it. They do say it's non-toxic. It's a bit stinky to use because it's kind of like a resin based or um, tree sap or something. I forget exactly how they describe it, but um, I use Sherbonder. You can use any sort of hot glue that you want. This is specifically for the skulls. I found this amazing um, spray paint. It's called chalk. It's not like actually chalk, but it has a chalk like finish for the base paint of the skulls. So that stuff is super cool. Also, before we hop in, I should mention um, how I came up with the design. So looking at the front of this corset stays. I originally was going to make a warbler, removable warble plate that would magnetize onto the front of the stays and then put all of the vines and skull details on top of that. Well, I did make the plate <laughs> and then I wound up hating it. So instead, I decided to make the vine things in two pieces. So one on the left, one on the right. I decided to use an applique for the front center that I glued the skulls to, and then just tack stitch it to the front of the corset. The reason why is I could not get magnets to hold this together. I bought these super strong neodymium magnets, can hold up to 150 pounds, but through all of the layers of zip ties and fabric and warbler, it just could not handle it without using a bunch of these. And when I used a bunch of these, it stuck it off of the, the stays in a very weird way. So instead, I just tack stitch it to the corset. My reason for wanting this to be removable was so that I could reuse this corset at a later date if I feel like it. So by tack stitching, um, I still can reuse it. Nothing is glued on and I can just um, seam rip out the tack stitches and the corset or the stays are perfectly ready to use again. I put a lot of effort into those and I do not want it to just die in a storage unit someday when I am done with this costume and no longer feel like wearing it. So repurposing and reusing is always something I try to do. So starting off, I needed to make a pattern. I put the stays onto my dress form to hold them into shape while I took a piece of computer paper and drew the shape I wanted. It is very close to the shape of the front panel of the stays, but I did add some additional curvature and shortened it a little. I first drew the top, then the bottom, and then refined the shape on the dress form with both pieces on. I only needed to make half the pattern since I can turn it over for the other side. This is the template I'm going to use to ensure the vines remain in the correct shape. To make the vines, I'm going to use Warbla Black and cut it into strips. I wanted them to be different sizes to make it a bit more organic so I didn't measure them out. Once I had enough cut, I heated the Warbla up with a heat gun until it had the consistency of fruit leather. Then I simply rolled them onto the table like Play-Doh until it was fused into one solid vine. Be very careful here. The heat gun is extremely hot and so is the warbler. You should always wear heat resistant gloves when working with it. Next, I just randomly coiled the vines around each other, ensuring to weave some in and out. Warbler sticks to itself, so there's no need for glue to hold these together. I wanted to keep the shape very organic, so I didn't stress much about how symmetrical this was going to be compared to the second plate, and I didn't stress too much about the way each individual vine looked. As long as it is in the general shape of my pattern, I'm happy. So weaving this onto the table means it's going to be flat and I, and my body definitely has curves. So I heated the warble plate up and held it to the stays that I had on the dress form. The stays have curvature to them and the dress form helped keep that in shape. And this allowed me to mold the warble plate into the appropriate shape. However, warbler is sticky when hot, so I did take a piece of parchment paper and held that up under the warbler against the stays to protect the fabric and keep the plate from sticking, and held them there until it was completely cooled and the shape was locked into place. 
Next comes priming. Make sure to wear a respirator when using this product. Once the primer has set, it's time to paint these silver. And I decided not to apply a top coat. Next, it was time to make the skulls. I believe this is a crow skull. Um, I am going to pop in here to just make a note about this 3D print file. I don't know who created this file. I am still very like basic with my 3D designs. So creating something like this bird skull is a bit beyond my skill at the moment. Whoever created this file, it, it's like ana anatomically correct on the inside so my 3d printer hated it especially in the size I was printing it so um, it was a very rough print and to clean out all of the support structure I actually broke off the jaw cleaned out the inside of the skull and then hot glued the jaw back in and I filled up a bunch of that empty space with hot glue with Sherbonder just to give it some more stability and fill in the empty gap in the jaw so that there was something more to stick to when I go to glue it to the front plate. I cleaned them up as best as I could and then glued them back together before using the same primer as before to smooth out the ridges from the printing. For painting, I did forget to record this part, but I laid down a base of cream color with the chalked Rust-Oleum spray paint. It is so far the best matte spray paint I have found. My camera did not like to focus on this part when I was doing the detail painting, but what I did was take a deep brown acrylic paint and darkened all of the holes. Then I watered it down quite a bit to do a color wash to exaggerate some of the shadows. I would paint a layer and while it was still wet, run my finger over it, it stained that chalked paint and allowed me to build up the color in layers and giving me a bit more control. And finally, I did take some white paint and painted very small highlights onto the skulls to add a little bit more dimension. I wasn't too terribly concerned about these looking super realistic. Finally, it was time to assemble everything together. I'm using a piece of the applique that will be used on the dress later to attach the skulls to. Since I want this to be able to be removed at a later date if I ever want to repurpose the corset, I thought it just made sense to apply the skulls to a piece that I could easily remove. I decided to use Sherbonder to glue the skulls to the applique while it was off to prevent any glue from seeping through onto the stays. Unfortunately, there was a natural straight line down the middle of this applique that I was able to follow to make sure everything was straight. So once that was finished, I hand stitched it into place using long stitches that I knew it would be easy to remove later if needed. Next, it was time to attach the silver plates. I did spend a little time making sure that they were lined up exactly how I had molded them before, and I used some silver thread to tack them into place. Given the amount of boning in this corset, there's 114 boning channels, and the odd shape of the plates, I did have to be very strategic when placing these stitches. I tried to choose places in the plates where the thread would blend in the most and not be super noticeable, while also trying to find places to go in between the boning channels. And then when I'm finished, I am going to add a little dollop of Sherbonder onto the knots on the back just for added security. I only did three stitches on each side for now so that I can try it on and make sure that everything is in place. And finally, my favorite part and the most stressful part, it was time to try this on. I wanted to make sure that the plates and everything fit well and it functioned well before I did any further tack stitches. I was super happy with how this looked. This is my very first time trying on the stays. I had no idea if they were even going to fit. I just love how it turned out and I love the way that the plates look. I do need to add a few more stitches to hold them in place and move one of them in just a little bit more, but I am so extremely excited for this and I cannot wait to wear the whole thing together. So that's how I made this. Super easy, it really is. It didn't take too terribly long. Just the um, actual rolling out of all those warble pieces and then priming everything. You know, there, there's, there's wait time when it comes to priming and painting and whatnot, but it was actually pretty easy. And so I hope this video helped you. If this is something that you like, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Make sure to like the video if you liked the content. Any questions you have, make sure to put in the comments below. I'm usually pretty responsive and I'm always happy to help. Um, and just a side note, I will be at Holiday Matsuri. No idea what I will be cosplaying as, but I will be there. If you see me, make sure to come up and say hi. And I will be guesting at um, Animate Raleigh at the beginning of January so make sure to drop by and say hi at my booth if you happen to be in the area. That is where I will be debuting my Ravenna 
costume, as well as another slightly easier one to make. <laughs> so that's all I have for you today. I will see you in my next video, which should be, hopefully, the base dress of this build. I should be able to finish up the sleeves, assuming the ribbon comes this week, and then hopefully I can get that up this week as well. So with that, I will see you in my next video. Bye!